oh my gosh, a female lead in a Star Wars movie. And then the trailer for Rogue One comes out, and it's another female lead. Oh my gosh, how unfair. We've had probably like two million straight film cinematic roles where men have been leads, and now we've done two in a row that are women. Uh, well, too bad. Oh well. Maybe there are more coming. I don't How know. How does it feel to be part of Star Wars? What did you enjoy most about the experience? Uh, I'm... Oh, God. <laughs> Star Wars is, is very, like, patriarchal, so it was kind of cool to have, like, this sort of woman-centered figure. People have told me that it's the gayest Star Wars, and I'm frankly into it. My daddy, daddy, dad, and the Bob Iger is all like, eh, no, what's going on with my dad? No, daddy, can't. The fight is done. We lost. Huh. <sighs> Mates, I don't want to come off as a drama queen when I say this, because honestly, I am not even the exaggerating type. But there's kind of only two ways that I could go about even mentioning my point when talking about a show like The Acolyte, a show and most importantly in this case, a Disney Star Wars product that I think not only has become the most controversial and divisive entry into this IP since Ryan Johnson's career ended The Last Jedi, ripped John Boyega's career because we'll never actually know how well he could have honed in his craft, or how many doors of opportunity were shut down after the debacle that was that movie. Justice for Finn, but I'm getting off topic. The point of the matter is, when it comes to the Acolyte, and when I say that, I am talking about everything that encompasses that show, from announcement to the now unfortunate or fortunate cancellation, depending, I guess, on whatever side of the fence you're sitting on, but that soliloquy about Ryan Johnson, The Last Jedi, and even, in a sense, John Boyega in the mismanagement of the entirety of that production, is kind of the real point here, because when it comes to the Acolyte, it kind of shows that nothing has really changed in regards to the leadership, direction, creative management, and lack of self-awareness in what the audience is looking for. And of course we as audience members and a community that has amassed one of the biggest fandoms of all time could point to the many, many other Disney Star Wars products that let's just say have tried their best to masquerade themselves as credible streaming shows that have also shit the bed like the Boba Fett show or Kenobi, or even in the best of cases, we're just looking at relatively mid shows like the Ahsoka series or Mandalorian season two and three. With the exception of Andor and say the Mandalorian season one, seemingly being the only shows or one-off seasons that actually managed to have a vision, plan, and a team with competent brain cells behind them, unlike the below IQ crews that seem to hamper down the entirety of these other series. But when you actually take an objective step back and look at the grander landscape when it comes to the problem that the Acolyte was facing, rather it's unfair or not, and I'm just a bloke so I don't really know, but it was the same problem that the MCU was facing, actually more specifically, the same problem that the MCU's The Marvels had to face. Let me explain. Obviously, while at this point, there have been so many articles, videos, and opinions from all sides of the table regarding the Acolyte's cancellation, and as I mentioned before, with the show that I now believe to be the most divisive entry into this franchise since The Last Jedi, you would think, especially from a studio's perspective, that that type of reaction was to be expected. But that doesn't really seem to be the case with the way Disney has gone about handling this situation, which is pretty nonsensical when you think about it. It really goes back to the lack of self-awareness and pretty much non-existent studio to audience relationship Lucasfilm has with its fans. Because just like how the Marvels definitely had its own faults when it came to its box office embarrassment, much like with the Acolyte and why I have been holding these two Disney products hand in hand in this video, the point of all of this is, is that the studio, the IP, and the brand that these two pieces of media belong to didn't do them any favors in the path that came before. And unfortunately, I believe just found themselves to be the last straw for some of the loudest and most chronically online parts of the fandom. What I mean by that is that I believe it could have been any show that could have found themselves in this situation facing this type of reaction, because in reality, it has nothing to do with the shows or the movies themselves, but what the studios that helm them represent in regards to the direction, quality, creativity, and focus of these IPs going forward. And while I mentioned before that with this cancellation, it basically just opened up the floodgates in regards to the blame game, even though you would think as just a rational-minded person when reading the article that the viewership was obviously the problem more than anything, 
the blame game will still continue to pick up more and more speed as to why the viewership was so low. And honestly, that argument is just redundant because no matter what side of the fence you sit on, nobody can be swayed on this particular piece of media. But even still, that's mostly what we're going to focus on because from my point of view, while I do think the question of why was the viewership so low is a very interesting question that actually has some merit behind it and is worthy of a conversation because it brings up the broad scale questions of is the Star Wars fandom genuinely shrinking over time? Is the quote unquote pandered to audience of this diverse and LGBTQ community even large enough to sustain such a high level of viewership that is required on their own merits? Or like I mentioned before, was the Acolyte just a victim of an inevitable outcome when it came to the direction and past choices of the studio and the handling of this IP? Because while I can admit I also was just not a fan of this show and the show's execution of its ideas overall, in the same breath, it's pretty easy for me to say that I don't believe I have seen good Star Wars, especially in the case of Disney Star Wars, since Rogue One. And granted, I haven't seen Andor, but even more still, I think this is just better than, say, The Mandalorian Season 1. Rogue One is genuinely the last time that I felt as if this studio didn't completely have their heads up their own asses. Because unfortunately, no matter how you look at it, especially now with the confirmation of the show's cancellation, The Acolyte was a show written by people that were in way over their head when it came to this IP. Unfortunately, to just use this joke again, a show spearheaded by a showrunner that can't tell her own head from her own ass Crafting and creating a show that was riddled with terrible pacing issues, character introductions that go nowhere with no impact on the story, and while you could argue that some of those character introductions were set up for season 2, my point still stands regardless, because even still, the show was littered with lazy character conveniences that replaced the writing tactic of cause and effect, protagonists that emote so terribly you would think that Gail Gadot was fucking Meryl Streep, don't get me wrong, we did have a couple fight sequences in order to edge and give the ammo to the forever dwindling fan base of the Disney superfans, one admittedly being the best fight in the Disney Star Wars' history, or whatever that is worth, a runtime that was honestly pretty childish when you think about it, and the worst part of it all, especially as an audience member, ideas that aren't actually bad when you really squint, and ideas that if handled by someone who actually had a higher IQ than your average garden variety tomato, a show where you can actually see a vision that isn't as bleak as the one that we are looking at now and asked to digest. But I feel as if that is the problem when you give a bloke $180 million to create fan fiction for an IP that she feels like she can cherry pick elements that are necessary for her slice of the cake without looking at the dessert in its entirety. And honestly, that is the main umbrella problem that Disney has faced since the purchase of this brand. Disney Star Wars as a whole simply don't know what they're doing. They don't have the qualified people to write scripts. They don't hire the qualified people to write engaging or unique characters. They don't hire qualified enough people to entrust this brand to and to respect the groundwork that came before. They don't hire anyone that helps contribute to the cause or the narrative that Star Wars or the people involved is a brand that cares about its audience. And when you don't care about your audience and for lack of better words, alienate and divide your audience for years on end, this is the cake that we as a studio to audience relationship is left with. And yeah, while it was relatively obvious that there was bound to be some criticism of the show, even before it started to air given the climate that we live in and the quote unquote culture wars Disney seems to be raising with anyone that has a beating pulse, a battle that Disney, Bob, and Kathleen seem to be willing to fall in combat for, and no, it's not like the show itself really lends its supporters any favors, and yeah, it's their own fault and people like Kathleen have really paved their own path of dumbassery when it came to this IP, so I don't have to reiterate all of the terrible choices she has made for this brand, but this is kind of a scenario where it feels not only insulting to Star Wars fans as a whole, either you're a fan of this show or not, but simply to the senses of any audience member that consumes media. It all just circles back to the fact of my own personal mindset when it comes to all of Hollywood of execution over idea, as much of a great idea that you might have if you just give a half-assed effort, or even if the effort isn't half-assed, just simply the end product isn't all that in a bag of chips, then what can you realistically expect from the audience to keep bird boxing themselves until their own mentality, standards, and expectations drop as low to the ground and become as toontown as their Hollywood supply? No. 
And in reality, in my eyes, that is not the way to go about your audience to studio relationship. And why I continue to reiterate that Disney Star Wars is by far the biggest brand in the deepest of sunken places, even compared to the other top dogs in the industry such as the MCU or even the DCU. And the fact that the Acolyte has now become a now cancelled show and the lowest rated Star Wars project of all time really signifies that issue. Disney, Lucasfilm, and the Star Wars brand to studio to audience relationship is starting to become a situation that feels unrepairable. And I think it's going to continue to feel that way until a product hits the mainstream market that can tickle everyone's fancies. The MCU just got a taste of that with Deadpool and Wolverine, and I'm sure what I'm saying is the reason why they decided to take the safest route of all time in recasting Robert Downey Jr. as Doctor Doom. The MCU was in desperate need of some wins, and this was the best course of action that they felt like they could take in order to secure some of those said needed wins. But when it comes to the Acolytes cancellation and what's left on the docket when it comes to the future of Star Wars products, I'm not quite sure I can say the same for Lucasfilm as I can say for the MCU. It kind of gives off the impression that they're not really in the game of reshaping their image. It's more of a stand on business mentality. But when that mentality is leading to a decline in business and the further alienation of fans on all side of the table now, seeing how everyone feels like they've been abandoned, then the question becomes, when does it end? Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.